Sharks taking on the Bulldogs. As you can see on the screen right there, the Sharks currently occupy eighth, while the Bulldogs currently occupy 15th spot. It's 6 p.m. from Points Bet Stadium in Sydney. Going through the team list quickly, it's the Cronulla Sharks. At fullback, you've got William Kennedy on the wins. You've got Sione Katoa and Ronaldo Militalo. You've got Jesse Ramian and Talakai in the centres with Braden Trindle and Nicholas Hines in the halves and 5-8 respectively. You've then got the props of Toby Rudolph and Oregon Kafusi. Um, the second row of Britton LaCora and Tig, uh, sorry, Teague Wilton with Blake Braley as the hooker role and Cameron McInnes packing the scrum in the lock position. The interchange, you've got Dale Finucane, Jack Williams, Royce Hunt and Thomas Hazleton with Kale Iro and Tuka Hua Tapua, Daniel Atkinson, Samuel Stone Street and Jaden Burrell in the extended bench. Baxter, a big, big win for these Cronulla Sharks. We actually watched the end of this game together. It was a big win for the Sharks in New Zealand last week. They battled. They were dominated. They were down 12-0. They rallied together. And I'm not going to say they did it all by themselves. The Warriors were quite average, but they got the job done in New Zealand, which we know is not an easy feat given the last couple of years. What do you make of this side? Obviously, we've spoken about the easy draw, but... What do you make of his side? It wasn't Nico Hines' best game, and how do you think he bounces back? Um, yeah, it's a, for any team, regardless of what it is, um, to be 12-0 down at halftime to come away with a 16-12 uh, win, um, it, it's pretty impressive uh, for a team who are allergic to finals football or September football, um, for those who don't um, otherwise know. For our American viewers, so um, yeah, look, sharks. Uh, like, I don't have them in my. Eight. Uh, I think their their bit their cap is a little bit uh, out of whack at the moment. Um, you know, it's, I, almost, I, it's almost as if they get into finals football and they play shark out of water and they can't play football, Baxter. Yeah, oh, it, it is so stupid. It is so stupid. The you know, as I quickly look over there. Um, their squad, thanks to uh, ZeroTackle.com, you know the only player that's over uh, on a million dollars or more is uh, Nico Hines at one point one, and then next year and and and, and the poor Blake, um, who's on a comfortable one million dollars. So they, I think they're just spreading the um the salary cap, well their their salary cap around enough. They don't have that player. Um, you look at Penrith, you know, you know, you got Yo, um, the Fish, they did have Critter there, um, Edwards, Cleary, Luai, um, yes, two of them are, are leaving, but um, they don't have that at Cronulla. They don't have that sort of leader um, that can really control a game. And I just really, really concerned, is it? Is it Nico Hines? Is he really a seven? He was, he was his fullback at Melbourne who was just the Mr. Fixer, Jigsaw Puzzle going anywhere that needed to be fixed um, for the Melbourne Storm. Um, and now he comes, to, he plays a couple of good games uh, in his first season at the Cronulla Sharks. Everybody's like in love with him. Is he the real deal at uh, seven? Is he. Does he need someone not – like they could have picked up Ben Hunt, you know. Ben Hunt wanted to leave at the end of the last year. That would have been a good get, you know. Someone with a little bit more ball knowledge between the ears, I say, um, to help him move into um, finals football. Well, I think it definitely shows, like you said, um, they are by all accounts allergic to – finals football they get then and they crumbled and last year they went out in straight sets at their home ground so i think like you said it he does need someone else another x factor around him is it adam fanua blake when he comes in to lead from the front we don't know but we know teams that are successful are on the back of a their backs that can push forward and their forwards that can hold out the other team and win that possession of territory but it is interesting. I think maybe that 5-8 position is something they need to look into. I don't know if Braden Trindle is the player moving forward to them, but enough about the Sharks for now. Back, so I'll throw it across to you. Talk to me about this Bulldog squad. 
Yeah, look, the the team with the biggest fedora going around in the NRL, Blake Tuff takes the fullback role still. Blake Wilson, Jacob Carraz, Stephen Cron, and kind of Tracy round out your back line. Matt Burton, Drew Hutchinson, now the halves. Max Kinn, Reid Marnie, um, PF, Juliana Kikau, Jacob Preston, and Jaden Salmon um, round out the the, the, the pack. So, so, sorry, um, Kurt Mann. Samuel Hughes, Josh Kern, Kurt Morin uh, make the interchange of men, and at the moment is Bronson Cherry at the 18th in the number 19 jersey with KK, Jay Turpin, Toby Sexton, and Josh Adekar named on the reserved uh, list um, so far, but I don't expect Josh to uh, make any sort of appearance um, in this game given that he did not finish last week's game. Um, it's still a surprise um, that Toby Sexton isn't in the, the Haas pairing. Um, I saw a, a funny... Um, not so fu- uh, To me, it was funny, but like more of a contradicting statement from Greg Alexander, the, uh, the um, Premier of Legend out there. Um, in one comment, he's saying that Matt Burn isn't isn't a isn't the seven that or isn't the seven or six for the Bulldogs. Uh, he needs to be in the in the half, uh, He needs to be in the centers. And then I think it was like a couple of weeks later he's saying, "Yep, Burden's the man to steer this uh, dogs team around in the halves and really contradicted himself. So I, I agree with uh, Greg with his first comment. I think he can be a better. Um, left-sided, uh, sorry, right-sided centre and um, shifting shifting Jacob Carraz uh, back out to the left, uh, at the, uh, the wing position and taking over to Connor Tracy because I think he's a better 14 um, than Kurt Mann and that could bring possibly uh, Toby Sexton into seven, Drew into six, I think. Drew, give him a little bit more freedom. Um Instead of being the the pl- chief playmaker at seven, I think he can do a better job. And I think moving forward, I think uh, this team could start to gel and work towards a um, the same goal and um, winning more games than they did last year. Maybe you need to get Jake Turpin on there. Um, oh, excuse me, in the internet interchange bird. Maybe um, Reed needs a bit of a, a a spell there or something, but. Um, Look, it's only it's only round one, and as I say that, like you know, in the pro box, I also say the cons because if this keeps going on in week two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, your season's probably you know, done and dusted. You, there's no way you're going to come back from a zero and eight start to the season. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Um, obviously, if you do go even zero and five, if you haven't got a win on the board after four or five rounds, the what, how tight we believe this competition and most people think this competition is going to be from, say, first to tenth, if you start the season with a few losses and you mentioned it in the previous game, you find yourself zero and two going into week three and you're fighting for your season almost and you're only three rounds into the season. So it will be interesting. Um, touching on a few things that you did say, obviously, Josh Adekar is named... Like you said, he's probably not going to play. For those that didn't, did not see it, he did have a complex AC joint injury on the weekend. He got manhandled. I can't remember who tackled him, but he got tackled. He went to the ground and he went straight for his... Originally, we fought Peck, but they're saying it is an AC joint. It's usually around a two to four week update. But hey, you put him in the lineup. We don't know exactly how he's gone, if it's switched, but that report was from three days ago. So there is a chance he could play, but... I'd say it's like 99.9% no and 0.01% yes. But we will keep moving from there. Obviously, something else that does stand up to me, and I'll pull it on the screen right there, it's it's Jamin Salmon playing in the lock position now. When he did leave um, where was it, Penrith, he, when he did leave Penrith and he went across to the Dogs, I don't think any of us saw him playing in that lock position. I definitely had him maybe in the 14 jersey, but I did understand that when they signed Drew Hutchinson, they had Toby Sexton. It was going to be hard for him to go into the lineup. And then you think if they're going to run two hookers, like you said, you've got Reed Mahoney. You've then got Jake Turpin on the bench. So I did think it was a very hard position for him to get into. But what do you make of Jamin Salmon winning that 13 jersey? Is it, I guess, 
a week got a dog move, as some would say, or do you think he's earned that? No, look, obviously he's done something to get that jersey. Um, um, surely being on the training paddock, um, maybe being an ex-Panthers player, um, coming to Toronto knows what he can do. Um, sort of gets him to tick, but with the dogs, I see they've signed a lot of um, utility players. Um, really, like we, as I, I start from fullback back, to Blake Taff, you know, he can do a job at fullback, but he's more of a utility. Blake Wilson, um, I'm sort of undecided there. Jacob Kraz, you know, I'm sort of also, also, also undecided. You know, Stephen Cryan, he's a three time premiership winner at Senna, so he's a tick. Kind of Tracy, yep, he was a utility back at the Sharks. So that's a, you know, Matt Burnham, he's playing out of position. Drew Hudson, he's another utility. So as I as I look, you know, in, from one to seven, one player is in the right position, and you know, in the and even in the um uh, interchange bench, Kurt Mann, um, reserves, Bronson Cherry, Jake Turpy, uh, Turpin, um, all all um utility players um and you can't really have utilities just to cover um multiple spots um you need players who are bread and butter out and out have done their work in a certain position and and are really good at it because um you know fair enough you know for the fox situation you bring in a utility to cover him for the next five weeks while he recovers and um, you know everybody, everybody can understand that. But as I said, when that in the back line, one to seven, six of them are utility players, in my opinion. Um, it's not on. Um, you know, the rumor is that Stephen Cryan should be playing fullback, but he's the best defensive center of 2022-2023. Um, Matt Burden could do a job at center, but then that you know big money. You know, big money contracts um, really eat into it. So I'd like to hear your take on um, this uh, Canary Bankstown Bulldogs as I get some information up. I mean, I think it's always important that you have utilities. Now there is a point where too many utilities are played and that's kind of what we're seeing at the moment. Um, It's great to have players that can play Mr. Fix-It. You can plug holes when you have it. Heck, the Roosters, when Orbison was there, um, that's what he was built on. He built a career on. He could play any position. Um, we've now seen it with, um, what's his name? Drew Hutchinson, sorry. Before he left the Roosters, we saw it with him. He he played centre. He played 5'8". He played halfback. He played on the wing when there was injuries. There's players there at getting them to do the job. But if you have five or six of them, it's great to have five or six players that can play five or six positions, but there's no specialty positions. There's no someone that can be a top four player in their team now. Crichton, yes, he is a top probably three or four centres in the competition at this stage, but he's now got to prove it without the backing of Nathan Cleary behind him, Jerome Lua behind him, and Dylan Edwards, and all those kind of players behind him. So it is going to be an interesting fight, but I do think the dogs are moving in the right direction, and if it is, get all these players in, see where they fit, drop the dead weight come the end of the season, I think Serato is moving in the right direction. But you were going to get some stats up, Baxter, but what are we doing with that? Yeah, look, as I quickly skim over their um, top 30 list and um, current uh, squad value and whatnot, out of their top 30, only 11 are, are contracted for the start of 2026. So that means they only have a two years or less deal left to go at the Dogs. Out of that 11 um, that have that third plus year um, on their contract, only five of them are starting. Um, you know, you look at Matt Bird and he's on 750 for the next uh, four years, including this year. Stephen Cron, 825, um, same amount of time. Uh, kick out 800 for three more years, uh, for two more years after this one. Reed Marnie, 600 for two more years after this year. And um, undisclosed Jason, uh, Jacob Preston there as well. So, um, And also Max King just signed a long term deal. So that's oh, 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 also been Max King. Yeah, Max Kinn, it, it, it is for uh, he is contracted at the end of 2027, but it is um, his figure is undisclosed at the moment. Um, but really, well, I mean, you've also got to think how many players are off contract at Penrith in the next two years. So maybe that maybe that's what they're planning for. Oh well, as you say that we when we get into the Penrith side of things, I'll um I'll bring up their uh, 
the little thing here. Well, as you, is, um, as you bring up, which is, bring which, is up the, which is the next game, which is the next game we can get into that. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that on the next one. But obviously, I have answered the last one first. Who are you going with in this one? Are you going with the home side? Are you going with the away side? Who do you think gets the points here? Um, uh, well, the Sharks roll on and go two from two, or do the Bulldogs get their first win? Ah, uh, look, uh, given uh, given to my um, good mate to uh, sportsfet.com.au. Uh, the line being nine and a half start for the Canterbury Bulldogs at a dollar ninety one. Um, I'm going Cronulla at a thirteen plus here. Now, you, you make zero sense. Last time you said it was eight and a half, so you're going to back sports bet and go one to twelve. Now it's nine and a half, and you're going to go thirteen plus. But I am going to side with you. I am going to go Cronulla thirteen plus. I think from all accounts, Nico Hines did have a. They won, but I don't think he had his best game last week. So he's going to come out with a point to prove. And like we said, we know that when Nico Hines plays the little kids, he likes to bully him. So I can see a lot of bullying getting done by Nico Hines, and he's probably going to be at least my vice captain or captain in Super Coach this week. But back to 